While legislative committees work behind the scenes, New Jersey's legislature is not fully in session. Assembly Speaker Vincent Prieto and Assembly Minority Leader John Bramnick are here to argue the state's biggest challenges. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here. Probably our biggest challenge is ongoing uh, problems with the state budget. Uh, Governor Christie blames pensions principally. That's a $3 billion annual ticket. How are we going to afford that going forward? Well, it's something that uh, our revenue projections have not been met. So I think that the state of New Jersey, and I've said it time and time again, I don't believe we have a spending problem. I think we have a revenue problem. Taxing problem. Uh, not a taxing problem, a revenue, how revenues come into the state of New Jersey. And we have to make sure that we create a uh, sustainable revenue stream. And the way you do that is by creating jobs. And we have done a good uh, job so far of giving incentives to companies to come here. Now we have to see that our economy comes around and we make sure that we have the proper workforce to fulfill those jobs. Easier said than done. Absolutely. We were heading down the right path. Uh, Chris Christie came to Trenton. We started to address uh, the problems. We put a 2% cap on property taxes. We started to address the pension health benefit uh, issues that face our state in terms of costs. Uh, we need to address the school funding formula set by the Supreme Court because money is sent to a district, but it's not based on performance, it's not based on results, it's based on a formula. That doesn't work. That, that we could probably save a billion dollars if, if we as legislature, as the legislature, decided where that money would go and how it would be spent. And I think Chris Christie was on the right path. I think we've hit a roadblock for a lot of reasons. One of them is partisan politics. The other thing is these problems are not easy to solve. And, and I, I would just chime into something about the uh, funding formula. We did work on the funding formula, and it wasn't a bipartisan committee, and it came out and it was constitutionally uh, acceptable. And the problem we have done is it's not been fully funded. That's why it's not working. I said the minority leader's district is actually getting like 15 million less than it should be. Deciding that something's going to be done and then not funding it has long historical precedent. What about raising taxes on, say, the top 1%? Well, well, the problem there is that's all we've done for 10 years. We've chased more people out of this state because we are one of the highest tax states in the country. And if you speak to people uh, who are retiring or close to retirement, they are leaving. We need to address the issue by changing things like the school funding formula mm -hmm. and by making this more attractive to business. Less attractive, more taxes, that that's failed. Uh, consistently for the last decade. Yeah. Both of you brought up bipartisanship, yeah. and I want to... But I just have to touch upon, I said that 1% is not the one that has been leaving the state and can't afford to be here. It's more the people that make about $100,000 that New Jersey, that middle class, is not being affordable to them to be able to live here. So I would disagree with that, and I think that that's a myth. Actually, millionaires in the last 10 years have grown by leaps and bounds in the state of New Take Jersey. You, sh you should be aware that, though we disagree on policies, uh, we do talk to each other on the phone if there seems if there seems to be an issue, and it's not personal at all. Okay. But I, I deeply believe that we have to get this state straightened out, and it starts with lowering taxes. Uh, in the last election, not a single seat changed parties. Not a single one. The power of the incumbency is so pervasive here in New Jersey. Does it prevent new thinking from well, coming in? I think, and I just propose this, we should have more competitive legislative districts because those in competitive legislative districts don't necessarily vote But in, when with you their party. redistrict and gerrymander to the point where that doesn't happen. Well, that's what's happened. We yeah. need to change it to make gerrymandering the purpose of gerrymandering is to make as many districts competitive as possible, and that's what I'm hoping the, the speaker the, will agree federal, with. There's federal regulations, one, one person, one vote, and you have to make sure of that. There's about uh, towns being split. But I can tell you this, it, it's all about what transpires. Listen, after the Florio initiatives, we only brought back 22 Democrats, and it was a Democratic map, you would have said at that point in time. After Watergate, 66 Democrats got uh, elected into office. Ancient so, history, I'm correct. talking about so, now. But, but now. It's a lot it, more it, Democrats it, now it, in the state. And, and, but that doesn't mean that if you look at some elections of what transpires in them, listen, more independents or unaffiliated are registering as new kids. Mm -hmm. Then how do, you, how do you compensate for that? Well, my concern now is it's all 
oh, who doesn't like Christie more? And it seems as if the Democrats are piling on because, you know, they're looking down the road. And for a long period of time, and I remember when Democrats were campaigning, they were saying, we work with Chris Christie. As soon right. as that election was over and we started to do uh, these, in my judgment, many partisan investigations, we've lost our way in terms of problem solving. We have to get back there. I, 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 would, I would disagree with that because I would <laughs> think that would be coming as uh, something across that you and I share, that we actually work well together. Yes. But I have been you, personally you working. You do, but guys, yes. have you ever, gentlemen. But have, I have not been piling on the government. Have, have you, have to this you speaker, ever actually. voted against your own party line? Has there been a single vote either of you have taken where your party has voted one way and you personally have voted the other way? Well, the, uh, now as the speaker, it's probably harder because I'm the one that puts up the bills. So obviously so I have to like the bill. Prevented from but we've always, definitely seen, have. we've always seen bills and we see them now yeah. where Democrats are split on a bill and Republicans are split on a bill. I mean, that, that's not very uncommon. That happens. But at the end of the day, tax breaks, as the minority leader talks about, right now are feasible. Right now, we have to look at our transportation trust fund, that we need to invest money into that, that that is what makes New Jersey attractive. A road system, because we are a corridor state, to be able to attract businesses here. And if we do not invest in that, that's going to be a problem, and it's decaying. New York's so advertising campaign is, hey, come to New York, open your business, we're going to save you taxes. And we are now talking about raising taxes. Those, that doesn't fly. Those are sound bites because if you listen to those commercials, gonna, where are you going to go? I'm going to ask you for one quick sound bite. Who's the next governor? Uh, we don't know. We have a governor, Chris Christie, uh, right now. He's got three more leaves. years, Governor Christie. It, it, uh, mm, uh, well, may, maybe uh, for taxpayers' uh, purposes and, and life, it'll be a Republican. I would disagree with that. I would know it's a Democrat, but uh, that will be left to be seen who are the candidates that we're going to have. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here. Thank, Thank you for being with us. you.